recording going. Okay, we're going to, I'm just going to get started with our little score intro as we wait for a few more folks to join us. But I would like to welcome you to Seven Steps to Get Publicity in Seven Days. We have Susan Harrow with us today. Uh, she is a new presenter for SCORE. And we're very happy to have her. And I know she's got lots of great information that she's going to share um, with you today. Uh, first, I want to talk about SCORE. Uh, we are ending the, the end of our trading season. We have uh, one more tomorrow, and then we'll be restarting again in January. So definitely watch out for our newsletters so you can see what's coming up in January. We get a lot of great offerings. The most important thing, though, that SCORE does is the mentoring, and I can't stress that enough at how helpful mentoring can be for uh, the small business community. We work with folks at all different stages in the process. We work with those that are thinking about starting a business. Is this right for me? I don't know. That type of phase. We work with those that are in the process of starting that business, and we work with those that are already in business. Uh, our mentors are volunteers. They have a lot of different experience and backgrounds that they want to share with you. So a lot of folks ask me, what is a mentoring session like? Uh, the first session will generally run around 30 to 40 minutes. It just really kind of depends. And they'll get to know you and what your goals are and what your or maybe what your challenges are. And then they will help create some sort of plan where you guys where you will work together to solve or get to that problem or get to that goal. Uh, sometimes we the mentors work in teams. They'll bring in other mentors as your needs change throughout your journey uh, in small business ownership. So you might wonder, how do I get a mentor? That is the easiest thing in the world. You can go to the one of the chapter websites listed here. I will put those in chat so that you have that information. Or you can just put a note in chat and say, I want a mentor, and I will make sure that the right chapter reaches out to you to get you set up. While you're on those websites, any, any of those websites, uh, please take a look at all the information that is there for you. There is are a ton of templates and tools and short little how-tos that anyone's going to find helpful. So definitely, if you have a question, you can go to Google or you could go to the SCORE website and find that information. Okay, uh, we are going to try and use two different things going on today. Chat for mostly everything. But if you have a question that you want me to ask to Susan, put it in the Q&A tab. That way I don't lose track of that question. And I will ask that question out loud. And if time allows, uh, we will try and unmute folks at the end to ask questions if that's easier. We'll have to see how, how the timing goes with everything. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop my share. And I'd like to welcome Susan. And I will let you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and get started. Thank you. Great. I think, hi, everyone. I'm Susan Harrow, media coach, marketing strategist, and author of Sell Yourself Without Selling Yourself, published by HarperCollins. I'm so thrilled that all of you are here. I was here at SCORE, and I think SCORE is such a fabulous, by the way, opportunity for all of you. Um, I've known about them since the beginning where I start, when I started my business 33, 33 years ago. So I was sitting with my client, Victoria Moran, and we were watching one of her media appearances, a TV show. And she was poised, and she was she was professional, but there was something that was off. And I said, what do you think is going on here? What do you think is off? And she said, I'm trying to be bigger than I am. I'm trying to be more. I'm trying to reach out to millions of people. And I said, what if you just relaxed and you were yourself? Nothing less, nothing more. And the next TV appearance that she did, she did just that. And at the end, the host and the cameraman and everyone stood up and applauded and gave her a standing ovation. And I think the first thing that I want to share with you is to be yourself, nothing less, nothing more. Oscar Wilde said, be yourself, everyone else is already taken. And I think there's enormous pressure from social media and in our world today to be other than I am. But what we really want is the original you. And I was, I was reading a poem by poet Dorian Lau, and she says in the poem, it's called In Any Event, what are we capable of is not yet known. And I was working with 
another client, Marty, and he's a VP of financial services, a wealth manager, and he was terrified to do TV. And he had low self-esteem. He actually had imposter syndrome. I know we think of that mostly for women, but he had imposter syndrome too. And the stakes were really high because if he didn't do well in this TV appearance, the publicist who was booking him locally, who was booking for the company nationally, because they were a very big company, was not going to book him anymore if he didn't succeed. And another thing is that he was kind of a perfectionist. So sometimes it's harder for perfectionists to, um, to play and go with the flow and experiment and, and not to be so hard on themselves. But we focused on really doing well for the TV appearance that he was booked for. And he got all of his messaging out. He, sh he shined in the media spotlight and the publicist was thrilled and kept booking him. What happened after that? He began to be recognized as a national spokesperson for his company. The national center of the company started using his information and his media appearances because what we always recreated he was on so regularly is things that were current in the media today that were hot topics that he kept coming up with and we practiced and he did and performed you know and and held himself really well had great presence on camera and then he filled up his entire roster of clients for the year that's what he's capable of. And I want to have you open your minds to see what you are capable of. Media training combined with publicity is the most potent alchemy that opens you up for possibilities that you're capable of. And walking your own path is the most important thing. So as we move forward, put a ha's or gems that you hear in the chat. And I'm hoping maybe, Teresa, you can save that chat um, for us at the end. Just I'd love to see it, see what people actually got out of this that were the gems that really stood out to the top. Is that possible to do? Oh, anyway, you can yeah, answer. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that would be that would be super great. Okay. Um, and then I don't know if you we want to share that later with people if we have a if you have a methodology to do that. But we really learn so much from each other. Like what what pops into your mind is sometimes something that somebody else reframes in such a way that it, it we can really hear it. And I popped in the chat first to ask you what's bringing you joy right now. And the reason why I asked that question is because really people are buying you. Yes, of course, they're buying your, your business book, product, service, or cause, your offer. But when you start to do media, what they're really buying is you and your believability, the like trust, um, the like trust and credibility factor. But what is bringing you joy, what lights you up is what we see first. And I will put all the links to resources that I mentioned in the chat at the end. I'm going to hold up my PDF document. So if you do want that with the clickable links, you can email me at publicist at prsecrets.com. That's publicist at prsecrets.com. Um, and put score Boston in the in the subject line and I'll send you the pretty the pretty PDF. So day one is set up your messaging engagement strategy that attracts the right clients, customers, and sales to you every time. We do messaging first before you reach out to the media. Most people do it back ass words, but then when the media calls, you know, you, you need to know what to say because whatever you say is in print or on video or in whatever form it is forever and you can't take it back. So we work on the messaging first. The foundation for that is three questions that I ask all of my clients. And so if you want to write these down and ponder them, I think it would be, this is really the foundation of your, your messaging and what will drive what you're going to say when you have any kind of media opportunity. The first one is, what's your deepest intention? How do you want to serve? And that can be a small thing or a big thing, whatever, whatever that is, but that's the number one foundation. Number two is what do you want for yourself? Professionally, personally, physically, financially, emotionally, spiritually. Why all of those things? Because publicity can open up this whole world for you. And that's, we wanna look at like every single thing that you could possibly want. And then we can weave that into the conversation. The third thing is what do you want your audience to do? What action do you want them to take? The call to action. Yes, maybe you want to drive them to your website or your brick and mortar, or you want to put them into a course, you want to move them into a course, 
um, whatever the aspect of your, you want them to hire you, whatever you want for your business, that call to action. And we're going to discuss what kinds of call to actions really work because right now it takes anywhere from set. The internet is so crowded. It takes anywhere from seven now to 20 touches before some people will buy. So you need to provide those touches. And I'm going to talk about what some of those are so you can set them up ahead of time and have be able to bring publicity brings people to your door and then you need to usher them through that. So we'll talk about how to do that. What should go into that messaging strategy? It's advice and knowledge to educate, entertain, inspire, and trance. And what you need to prepare is a topic that will serve the audience. Because sometimes people think, well, this is what I'm selling. This is what my promo I'm promoting. But actually, you're not selling a service or a product or you're pitching a topic. And that's kind of a mind shift. It's, it's and, and I'll get to, to how to do that, that reporters and producers love in just a minute. But the one story that every journalist and every producer is going to ask you is why do you do what you do? Pretty much they start with that. Why did you start your business? Why do you do what you do? Why did you create your if you've created something amazing, if you've created, a, if you've got a, um, a a nonprofit, whatever that is, why do you do what you do? How did you start? So I sent you that um, PDF called Five Signature Stories that you can create in five minutes. And that's at prsecrets.com forward slash SIGPOD, S-I-G-P-O-D, if you don't have it. And that's the one thing that it's all fill in the blank template. So all of you can do that and get your, your story ready to speak. And ready to speak in about anywhere from... 20 to 45 seconds. 45 seconds a minute is really the longest. And then you want to have success stories, experiences that your clients or your customers have had for you. And really, you want to be able to have it quantifiable in results, in numbers, in something that's measurable or something that's considered a transformation. And a transformation is like moving from one state to another, from calm to fear, like Marty. He moved from calmness to fear. Now, there was also a, a measurable result as well because he, he became a spokesperson for his company and also he filled up his client roster. So you can also talk about numbers, specific numbers, which here's another example. My client, uh, Dr. Jeannie Hurlbert, she owns a research and survey company, and she worked on like a survey for Katrina. And she worked with me for just a few months in my um, Zen of Fame, Your Genius Gone Viral course. And she said, um, after a few short months, she got media placements and outlets that included the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, the LA Times, USA Today, um, the Christian Science Monitor, on and on and on. So that's the one result is that she got media. And then what I want to look for is what did that media do for you? That's why your messaging is so important because what if you got on all of these great outlets, but then nothing happened? So it's what you're saying and who you are that's creating the success once you get the booking. So a lot of times people think, I just got to get booked, but that's just the beginning. And so her results were that she got lucrative consulting contracts with people like Tony Robbins, um, New York Times bestselling authors, and it really put her on the forefront of those big government and corporate contracts. And for her, that income was hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, of course, you know, we're not all going to have that kind of result of hundreds of thousands of dollars, but whatever that is, it's also cumulative. It can mean speaking engagements. It can mean a book deal. It really starts to open up that world for you, whatever you're focused on. You also want to have personal experiences that show who you are and what you want to, what you stand for. That's particularly important now for millennials. They want to know what you stand for and what your company believes in. So it wasn't as much of a focus before, but it is right now. Advice and tips kinds of mixing in, like, how can you help people with a, an issue or a problem that they have? Where do you fill in a gap? And the other thing, let's see what, oh, oh, to be a thought leader, 
we're really talking about opinions that sort of shape the world that we're in today. So if you want to move from being just an expert to a thought leader, that's a possibility as well. We start to work on those kinds of opinions that you that you're really differentiating yourself as like how to not just solve problems because opinion people who are thought leaders also ask the important questions. So for example, um, one of my new clients is a psychiatrist and she really believes that um, she works with adolescents and she said, I'm not trying to make them happy. I'm trying to make them functional. And I should be able to do that in a couple of months. And other psychiatrists, for example, like to keep clients super, super long term. She doesn't believe in that. She thinks that you can you can get someone functional and up and running in, in all of the areas that are important, family, sports, friends, um, whatever other areas there are, that that can happen in just a couple of months. And that's what she's succeeded in doing for thousands of people. So it's really a different perspective for people being in therapy forever, right? It's like she wants to get them up and running and, and there. And that's really a big shift. Um, then once you have your messaging down, you want to role play it, put it in a question and answer format. So you really get the sense of what a media interview is like back and forth. You can do that with a friend. You can do that with a media trainer whatever, but it needs to be, you have to practice it out loud, not just in your head. Day number two is to create the three hot hooks that the media love and that the audience does too. So the three hot hooks, now the, these are, of course, there are more of them, but these are the most common. And if you start watching TV and looking at the headlines on magazines and podcasts and even influencers, you'll see that that these are the pretty standard formats. So number one is problem solution. What problem do you solve? So an example of that is help. What can you do if your doctor is killing you? Six strategies to save your life. And the statistics are, this is what's backing it up. There are currently 161,000 avoidable deaths that occur in hospitals every year, according to the LeapFrog group. Really scary stuff. So we know that this is a huge problem and we're backing it up by statistics. So when you are solving a problem, one of the quickest way to prove it is to get statistics to back that up. Number two is to dispel or debunk a myth. So my client psychologist, Bonnie Burnell, she's author of Bountiful Living, states that dieting makes you fat. And her statistics are from the National Institute of Health that show that 98% of people who diet gain more weight than they've lost. So that's, a, you know, from yo-yo dieting, that's very clear and succinct as well. And then number three, and you really need to be prepared for this one, it's not for everyone, but it's to create controversy. Right now, we're at a point in the culture where we really want things black or white, like discussions of like, here's someone with one view, here's someone with an opposite view, and, and debate. Although there isn't so much debate, it's, it's people shouting at each other and not understanding. But to create controversy is to take a strong stand on something. So when the Columbine killings happened, I don't know if you remember that because that was so long ago. My client, Jane Swigert, who wrote The Myth of the, of the Perfect Mother, was on um, a number of shows talking about, oh, about TV shows to comment on why do kids kill? And the question that's really controversial that came up again in one of the latest kill killings is, should parents be responsible for their children's actions. So that's something that you can see that as if you if you're an expert in that topic, every time it comes up, sadly for this one, but every time it comes the topic comes up, you can then be pinged as an expert because you've already acknowledged and you've already spoken out at that on that topic. So once you start to speak on a particular topic, whatever that is, then the quickest way that journalists get experts and get people who are thought leaders is they look to see who's already spoken. I remember when I was doing a lot of freelance writing for magazines and I would look in other magazines, this was before the internet, by the way, I would look in other magazines and see what experts were quoted and then call them up 
because they were already great. They already had great quotes. They were a proven, they were a proven source. And that's really what the media is looking for. And by the way, um, so if this is helpful to you, you know, pop in, uh, yes, this is helpful. I'd love to see that if this is landing and if you have questions about it right now, you can pop them in now or save them till the end. But if something's not clear, or you want more detail, I'm happy to answer it now. Um, the other thing that you really want to do is link to something topical that matches the host style and audience that you want to reach. So you, and the other thing is that you can look for angles, trends, celebrations, calendars. So every time there, for example, so one of my clients was speaking, she's a telehealth uh, expert and licensed medical doctor who's licensed in 50 states, which is hugely uh, prestigious. And she was talking on Women's Health Week. And one of the things that she said, so she's considered an influencer and a thought leader is why do we just have one week that we're focused on women's health, right? Like that's great that it's on the calendar, but we really need to start focusing more attention on women's health. But it was, she was booked for that particular week. So when there's cancer or Valentine's Day, I mean, Valentine's Day and all the holidays are the usual ones, but start to look at the calendar for like bring your daughter to work day, but any kind of day that would coincide with your topic, because there's, there's everything for everyone. And that's when you can pitch a topic too. So day three is to create a free gift and a follow-up strategy. And this is so you have an opt-in so you can capture names and you can stay in contact. As I mentioned before, publicity brings people to your door and you need to have a system to move them through the process to engage with you on whatever level they're ready. Some people are only ready for free and some people are ready for a smaller offer, right? And some people are ready to engage with you full on, whatever, whatever that is. But a lot of that is consistent contact. So the free gift should be both specific and offer immediate gratification. So when I gave you my, um, my, signature sound bite, your, your signature story. I said, it's five templates that you can create in five minutes. So there's a time and there's uh, easy. So it's something that you can do really fast. So you're like, you're thinking, oh, I can get this done. So you want it to be like super fast and doable. Researchers who study, we talked about the five to 20 interactions. So part of those interactions would be blog posts, panels, presentations, podcast episodes, speaking engagements, magazine features, TV and radio spots, chit chat on social media, phone conversations, people who, who come back to your website. One of the things that I always ask people who decide to become clients of mine, I say, how did you find me? I want to know that my SEO is working. Um, and they, what did they search for? And then I said, why did you choose to connect with me now? And what inspired you? And some people will say, well, I saw you on a webinar and then I went to your website and I read all of your testimonials and then I read your blog and then I watched more videos and then I decided I needed to book a call with you. So already they're three quarters of the way engaged with me before we even have that phone or Zoom conversation. And so whether it's a product or a course or whatever that you have, you want people to be semi-sold by all of the other engagements that they've seen everywhere on the internet. But you want to be able to capture their name and their email address so you can stay in touch with them for their what when they're ready to buy. I've had people who heard me 30 years ago and they just engaged like 30 years later, right? So so some of it's short term, but also think about medium and long term too. Cause I know we all want immediate results, but they don't sadly, it doesn't always happen that way. But there are always people who are who are ready now people who are not at that stage of, of business or whatever that they can engage with you, but they want to, they want something for you. They really like you. So they still want to want to engage. So be thinking about short, medium and long term 
for your media and realize that any kind of media appearance builds up that credibility. So you're already establishing that you are an expert, that you're an authority by getting into the media. And, you know, people have told me that even like getting booked on a podcast has gotten them um, higher level speaking engagements, for example. It didn't necessarily have a direct, a direct effect, maybe a client or a customer, but people listening to that then were sold on booking them for a speaking engagement. Um, so I wanted to give you a couple of examples of that. Um, an ebook, a video tutorial, a collection of recipes. People love recipes, by the way. That's one of the most popular things on the internet. Oh, one other thing I wanted to say about social media is that um, since you don't own those people on social media and the algorithms are always changing, your goal, no matter how many people you have on social media, is to move those people onto your list. So whatever medium you're in, if it's TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, the goal is to get them on your personal list. That's going to be most important. So then you control how often you can connect with them for that short, medium, and long. So I'll go back to my list just to give you some ideas. It can be a meditation. It could be a checklist. It can be a listicle, a coupon code if you've got a brick and mortar or something or products that you're selling on the internet and, and or off, um, a resource that saves your visitor tons of time, uh, an opportunity to, to attend a training call or a class like what we're doing, a webinar, um, a 15-minute consult for you. And I'm happy to offer you 15-minute consult for, for you as well, which you'll have on that resource page. So PR brings those hot leads to the door. You need a system to usher them through. Day four, create your press kit. Why? Because the media needs to vet you and they have certain materials that are formulaic that they wanna see. And if you don't have those and someone else does, they may choose them over you because it's more of a hassle to connect with you and ask you for those materials. So you wanna have them ready. So a press kit is something that you would put on your website and or on a website repository. So one of the PR firms that I work with is called um, Wasabi Publicity, and they have something called Presskit 247. And I'm putting that link in your resources as well. So you can see uh, the a great example from one of my clients of everything she has in, in the press kit. So I'm going to run through it really quickly, and then you can look at that later and see how it's all set up and get inspired for your own. And you can look at every a lot of other profiles too to help you help you get inspired. So it's all in one spot. And the other advantage of having it in that PR repository is it comes up first because there's so many people there and journalists go there regularly, journalists and producers go there regularly, they come up higher in the search engine than your press kit would come on your, on your website. But I recommend that you have it in both places. So what do you need? You need a current bio and you should have a, a short, medium and long. So short one for TV, which is just one line, a medium bio, which would be for like a podcast and a long one for just people to get to know you. Photos of you, your products, your books, if applicable, and photos usually headshots and body shots, especially if you're a speaker. Um, a brief overview of what you do, the topics or news angles that you're qualified to speak about, the interview questions that you want to be asked. And by the way, it's super important. Like I had a client and we were going over all the questions that we, we were working with a PR firm and we created all these questions and we just, we discovered there were some great questions, but he didn't want to answer them. Some of them, he didn't really have answers. So you think I've got these great questions. It's like, you want to do it. You want to think about what you want to talk about and then create the questions that lead you into that information. So we had to reorganize some of his questions to, um, to be ones that he really wanted to answer. And we also had to answer what I consider like a white elephant or the elephant in the room, like things that would stir up controversy. We wanted to get our perspective around those, though, those issues first, because we knew those kind of questions would come up for him. He actually happened to be, um, it was the topic of hemp, um, industrializing hemp, 
which is something that we haven't done, but could solve a lot of our ecological problems in terms of energy and paper and all of this sort of thing. But I knew he was going to be asked questions about um, Mitch McConnell, and who was uh, is a promoter of hemp and his political views. So we really wanted to shape he didn't want to be bipartisan. He really wanted both sides. So we really needed to shape that perspective ahead of time because I thought he was going to get some of those kinds of questions. What else? Video or audio samples. So if you've done a podcast or you've done a TV interview, you want to put that up there. Logos from blogs, magazines, radio, TV programs that you've appeared on. Um, if you want to go that in the next level, you would have a sizzle reel, which is a combination of all of the highlights or the best things that you've done in one super short video. Sometimes now, because our attention spans are shrinking so much, it's usually just a couple of minutes, a minute or two, um, because people's attention span. So it's it's actually very, very fast. In the olden days, even the olden days, like last year, um, things were we had more latitude, but because of the rise of TikTok, you know, now the 15 second videos on TikTok are the most watched, right? 15 seconds. And then one minute video, under one minute videos now are surging in popularity. So as you start to think about packaging your information, even for any audience, not just the media, but for your, for your audience, start to think about shorter. It's not that you shouldn't do some of the long form because definitely people who are interested in your topic or whatever you have to offer will stay for some of those longer videos, but mix those in. Um, so, oh yeah, so I wanted to share with you Dr. Joanne Dahlketter, who was in my Zen of Fame course. She's an Olympic performance coach and I love this phrase. She says, how to have a gold medal mindset, which I love that phrase. She tripled her speaking fees from 5,000 to 15,000 in just four months in the course. And then she got on NBC's um, TV five, uh, T NBC's TV five times. From that, she got great contracts, high quality students in her program. And so she put NBC's logos and all of the other logos from her appearances right on the homepage. It's the first thing you see on her website banner. So consider when you get these media appearances, you can put them front and center on your website as well as on your media page, because that is like the instant credibility. You've seen some of those bands, which is really popular now, but it's also a choice of where you want that, like boom, instant credibility. Day five is to create your wish list of media contacts. Better to be small and specific than spray and pray. And what I'm I am am giving you is um, a link to a um, a Chrome extension where you can find the media's or anyone's email address with this extension. So for example, if you wanted to be in Fortune or, or Inc. or on the Wall Street Journal, you can just go to that website and with the Chrome extension, look at the form. It shows you the format that that particular company or website uses for all of their contacts. So it's super useful for finding anyone at any publication. So this will shorten your contact list finding really quickly. And one of the things that you want to do is create that list that's very specific, that is that is really in your, where your audience is. You know, so I was just talking to an actual colleague of mine and sadly, she was spending $10,000 a month on publicity, but it wasn't for her target market. It was just wherever. And I said, well, the PR person needed to come up with a strategic plan for your brand and everything to know where do we want to actually pitch that people where the your expertise and the audience interests meet. So that's what you really want to think about, not just like, I want to get in the, into this magazine, like be very strategic about, about where you want to appear or where you want to be interviewed or featured. And then it's much better to personalize that. I was just listening to 
a show that I love called Marketplace on, um, I think it's on PRI. It's a, it's a show that's all across the country. And uh, Kai Rizdahl was interviewing the, a slate writer named Dan Coy. And he receives, just so you have a sense of this, a um, hundred emails a day. And they come in like nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, but most of them are not targeted to what he writes about. And so that is a huge waste of his energy and time. And that's what journalists and producers hate is getting these kind of emails and pitches that have nothing to do with their audience or what their quote unquote beat is. So you to stand out above everyone is to really research that they really write about your specific topic and read or watch the, um, you know, if it's, if it's a TV show, you want to watch the TV show. If it's a podcast, you want to listen. If it's a writer, you want to read their stories and get really familiar with what they, that they've written. Um, so that's the, that's the Chrome add-on. And by the way, there's new statistics coming out from podcasters, they reject pitches that are lack of personalization. 47% of them couldn't stand that. The other thing that they look at is bad timing. It wasn't the right timing for the topic. But this is really um, an important thing if you to take away is to is the personalization in this very super noisy place. That is what is going to put you to the creme de la creme. I'm doing a podcast, I have a podcast booker, and I'm doing quite a lot of podcasting now. That's how we got to here, by the way, was my podcast booker. So she's like, well, what about, you know, what about speaking here too? I'm like, okay. So um, I want to focus on podcasting for you because it's easier and simpler to, to break into podcasting than it is to some higher level traditional media. And the reason why um, it's so effective for you is actually threefold. Number one is that people get to know you. It's 30 minutes or an hour of you expounding. So it's a great way to start practicing your messaging. Yes, of course, I want you to have your messaging down and you have some expansiveness for kind of conversation, for getting comfortable, for using it. And it's most of the time it's on video now. Then once you do a podcast, you can pop it onto your website and a TV producer even can see how you are back and forth with someone. So even that can be used as an example. Number two, so it's the 30 minutes and it's the it's conversational, it's easier. And then number three is like, okay, so because on like Instagram, you get 30 seconds of you and podcasting, you get that 30 minutes. The other thing is that it's really great for SEO your search engine optimization, meaning when you get a backlink because the podcast has posted on the, the host's website, it's called a backlink that links to your website, Google ranks you higher. So when you start to do a number of these podcasts, you start to get a number of these backlinks and you start to show up higher in the search engines organically. Now that's a little bit of a slower burn, meaning, you know, it happens over time. It's not like suddenly you're going to jump to number one, but it's part of any SEO strategy. And it's really a good one. Do we have any questions or thoughts so far? Yeah, I, we do have a couple if we if you want to. Uh, yeah, go yeah, let's let's yeah. do it. Yeah, let's let's ask. Let's do a couple of questions. Um, the first one that came through chat. Are there agents or managers for this type of work like actors have agents? Yes, they're called publicists. So publicists, typically what they do is they they work with you to figure out who your audience is. Are. Sometimes we have more than one audience. Like um, I'm talking to someone now who's got a program for schools, but she has got three different audiences. She's got parents, she's got schools, and then she's got people who want to teach in the schools. So we're going to be working on a campaign that that uh, different because it's different publications and shows for each what I'm calling a vertical. So we want to look at first, like what are your where are your people and who they are so we can figure out which publications and which shows to go after. So there are publicists and they typically, some publicists do everything from booking you on radio, TV, print, podcasts. Some specialize, like the one that I have right now, specializes specifically in podcasting only and speaking. 
So there are a few like that, but you might want, depending on what you want to do, is, is work with a publicist and then I'm a media trainer, meaning they don't really focus on your messaging. They focus on booking you because that's what you're paying them for. And then I work with the publicity firm and you to get the messaging down. So what you say really matters and has an effect and has a result on your business. And so we go hand in hand. And then I prepare you for each segment because print is different. A print interview is different than a radio interview. It's different than a TV interview. So once that PR person books you, I work with you on that particular segment, shaping it, creating it. Sometimes we create all of the questions. We create all of the background footage, which is the B-roll or background footage, which is what you see on TV. Um, the uh, the things that roll through the screen, it's either video or, or static or photos in the background. We create all of that to to shape the perception because the more work we do, the more work that me and the publicist do and you do, the more we have control of that segment or of that, um, even of a feature, like lots of times we do a fact sheet for for a feature, which is a print printer. And I'm saying print, and I also mean online because, you know, sometimes it's, it's both. Sometimes it just shows up on the on online. Sometimes it's, they are separate oftentimes with the higher level magazines, but um, there's the print version, then there's the online version. So yes, that's called a publicist. So a PR agency or a PR firm. And me, I'm a media trainer to train you to say the right things at the right time to the right people. And then the podcast booking agency is sometimes separate, but sometimes the PR agency will book you on podcast too. Okay. Um, first, you are. Uh, we have a compliment. Uh, you're an excellent and inter interesting presenter. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that was very nice. Um, they're wondering, uh, I'm a small manufacturer um, beyond contacting journalists, any tips for at, at assessing uh, new product content sources? Like they, they sell new products. So they're looking for, um, how do they find sources to? Um, so oh, have their like trade shows? I'm not sure. I could be. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure either. That's not really my wheelhouse. What I can tell you is that if you do publicity and you name, so the, the important thing and the reason why we create the messaging is to really name your audience because you want to have examples of people who've used your product. So then other, other whether it's wholesalers or whether it's um, like a William Sonoma or people who who feature your product will be out there. That's often what happens from publicity is that then when you contact someone who is going to source your, if, if I'm answering your question, um, if they you want people who are going to sell your manufactured product, I think that's what you're saying. Oh, I have a clarification. We just got a okay, clarification. Uh, like, um, like Martha Stewart new product sections on their website. Like how can you get your product into you know, like Martha Stewart's new product section in her website, oh, that kind of thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's a pitching process. So you would want to find out who is Martha Stewart's um, editor of that, of that particular area. So you can use that hunter.io uh, Chrome thing, and it will list like the, it will list the titles of the, of the, of the people on that website. And then you would send in your information to that person. Now, one thing about sending in your information, we haven't talked about pitching yet, but you want to um, have a very strong headline and uh, a headline that you put in the subject line. So that's got to be like super important. That's where your three hot hooks come in, where you have a, a super strong headline. Like the headline would have been, um, uh, should parents be uh, blamed for their children's actions when they kill? That would be like in the subject line. So whatever fantastic thing about your product is, it would say like, you know, like new way to make cupcakes that don't, that where you don't gain weight. <laughs> I wish that were true. Um, but, you know, so something or whatever the, you know, or whatever the, the, that is, you would put that in the headline and then you would just put a very short paragraph about your product. And then, um, you can't you can't include attachments. Um, so you can't uh, attach photos or whatever. You need to put in links 
to so they can go from that email to your website and see your whatever that is that you have. So Martha Stewart's editor can see what that is. Okay. Is that it. clear? Okay. Yes, uh, we got an I understand <laughs> oh, great. reply. Okay, so <laughs> okay, good, good. Uh, uh, one more question. Um, I'm not sure if this would be appropriate, but uh, what's the best way to track people who come to your website? Do you have a method for doing that? Um, getting them on your list. <laughs> no, so I know that Wix has a, I think it's Wix that has something built in. WordPress doesn't have something built into that, but um, the quickest, I mean, one of the ways is to have pop-ups, which are opt, you know, opt-ins that we were talking about to get people on your list, but direct tracking, um, you can't get the person's name, but everyone should have Google console, which is a way to see how many people are coming to your list. And then if you have a specific opt-in page, like I was just on a podcast yesterday and he actually has, um, uh, a, a page specific for every single podcast that he's on so he can track that. The other thing is that you can create an offer. Like if you are on a TV show or, um, you know, you if you were in, Mar not got, I hope you get into Martha Stewart's, uh, that gift section or whatever that is, but you can pop onto your homepage, special gift for Martha Stewart's people. Right. So then you can, there are other ways to track it that are maybe not as automated. I, I wish there was an automated way, but I don't know it about in terms of actually getting people's email information. And also, you can't use it that way because it's spam. So you wouldn't be able to email them. That has to be a double opt in process. So the only way that you can contact them is if they have opted in to whatever it is. So I don't know if that's a moot point or not, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, can you give someone an idea, like if you're out shopping for a media trainer or publicist, what would be the range of fees so that you had an idea of what to expect? Yeah, really, mostly good publicists are not going to take you for any less than three months. Usually it's a six month contract. Some people like a year and it's usually a, there's the minimum is usually twenty five hundred a month. Um, the maximum, I've talked to some publicists that are business publicists that start at 20,000. So there's really a huge range. What you want to look for, though, is that um, a real track record of people who have results in terms of getting those bookings, because it's not really just about the relationships, it's about being able to pitch properly and um, and really understand that that like I work with publicists who do the strategy, like the, the, the colleague that I told you who had spent $10,000 a month for six months. I'm like, I just tear my hair out about that because I'm like, oh my God. And she got nothing out of it. And so you really want someone who comes to, and you are welcome to ping me if you're wanting some recommendations for people that I've vetted, that I work with, that I know get results and, and have, you know, are very fair and would never take you on. Like I would never take anyone on and neither would the publicists that I work with. If we didn't feel that your topic was promotable to the media. I just had someone come to me the other day and while she was speaking all over the world or whatever, we were like, you know, we don't know if the media, the top media is going to buy this topic. And so we're not taking her on because, um, we're not sure that it's going to be a go. So I think hopefully I've answered that question too. So 2,500 to, you know, you, you probably, I mean, since you're starting a business, you wouldn't go with the ones who are 20,000 and up, but I think the average is three to 4,000 a month. That would be a good average. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, that's all the questions I have right now. Did you want okay. Yeah. So let's jump into, I really want to focus on podcasts and give you the whole podcast strategy that I use. Um, most of it. Anyway, the one that I ha I can't cover all of it because I have a back end strategy that can help you get clients. And that's what I work with my clients on. So it's something that's very innovative and creative that other people aren't doing. But I will share with you like the steps to get on really great podcasts. Number one is to re research the topic, research by topic. So whether your business, health and wellness, leadership. So that's step one. So you can just go right into Apple Tunes and Apple, uh, Apple and do that. And then 
Below it, you can see who's related. So if it's a podcast that it looks like it's right for you, you, you get a whole list of other people who are related. Number two, and sometimes this is, this is a big error, they have to have guests. Sometimes people are solo. So you want to look to make sure that they have guests. And I know that sounds super obvious, but, but, um, but sometimes it's not. Make sure that it's current and that they interview at least once a week. Now, they should have at least 20 reviews, and it shouldn't necessarily be from the guests. It should really be because you want to see how active their community is, you know, and then you, you want to listen to at least two. And then you can hear how they're promoting it and hear how they interact with their community. Is the style right for you? Is the guesting right? You know, is it, is it, is it a good fit for you? And is the host a good fit for you? And then you want to make sure that they haven't covered your topic. Right. And if you, even if they've covered it, if you have a new way, you can use that to pitch them. And then you want to, and this is how you pitch them, you want to give them a sincere compliment. What did you like about their interview style? And how did it, and some kind of comment that shows that you've listened to a segment. And then you write a review and you do a screenshot of, of that pitch. So when you pitch your topic, you actually, have the screenshot that you've reviewed, you've listened to it, you reviewed it in there. And I like to word the topic how they word their topics. So you're pitching in a way that they, so you've already done the work for them, in other words. So they, the way that they label their contacts and guess is the way that they're pitching them to you, the audience, to listen to. So I mirror that. And then and I know this is a lot of work, by the way, but it's very successful and you will stand out above everyone else. And then you include, you can include three talking points of, about what you discuss. I've done it both ways. Sometimes I just do the sincere compliment and then I do, and I have no idea how Anastasia pitched you, by the way, for me, but I think we, I think we sent you to my, um, I think we sent you to my one sheet where it had a whole, a, a lot of different ideas, right, Teresa? And then you thought, oh, a couple of the ideas, ideas yeah. could work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. And then we, I think we also saw one of your presentations or something. Oh, oh you did. Time. Okay. So, yeah. so you, you vetted me ahead of time, right? So yes. <laughs> absolutely. Yes. <thank> you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, so you can, I'm not going to go into how to create that, that one sheet, but you can go to my website and just click on my press kit. And then you'll see that you will see that podcast one sheet and a speaking one sheet. So you can take a look at that on your own. Um, and then um, you share a paragraph bio about who you are and include a call to action. And then, and then some of the things that we've been doing on the back end is actually including our promotional strategy, which means that um, after you do the podcast, how are you going to share that information with your list, with your social media? And we have a whole system that we use that's very in-depth, but it's very systematic about how we do that. So we're, we're out promoting them, which is what they really want, um, after the podcast. And we put that, some of that is evergreen. It's in our consistent promotion sy system. And the media want that, by the way, as well. So they want to know how, how many people you have on social, how many people you have on your email list right now. It's super competitive. I actually know of a PR firm that had someone booked on the Today Show and they canceled him because his social following was so small. Now, to avoid that, you can talk about other creative ways that you can promote the show or whatever that is on there, because that is the way that traditional media is going as well. So bring opportunities so you're seen everywhere. A woman on LinkedIn who has a community of high achievers pinged me because she said, I just saw you three times in three different places. And so now I'm speaking to her group and she's become a client of mine. So that's how this strategy works when you start to do podcasts, you know, do, you know, do some uh, traditional media, do some social media, and it all adds up to a big something. Day six is set up an account on Harrow. Help a reporter out. And I have this in the links, um, dot com. This is a, an email that you will get three times a day. And it lists what are called queries or calls for experts or sources from the media who's looking for a source. So even before you send something out, 
This is a way that you can get immediate publicity ASAP by responding properly to a reporter or a producer's query. So what you want to know there is you want to respond exactly what they asked for. That may seem really obvious, but people don't do it. So if they say, I want three tips, you write three tips. End of story. And you take your bio and, and you might have, I've got like 10 different versions of one bio. You take your bio and you personalize it and customize it to that particular topic so they can see immediately that you're an expert in it. So by my client, Dr. Leslie Korn, she's a Harvard-trained traumatologist. She founded a nonprofit center for indigenous people. Um, I had... I don't look at, at Harrow every single day, but I had looked at it and there was there was a pitch for to be an O magazine, Oprah's magazine, that I thought was right for her. So I sent it to her and it was about a natural way to, um, to stop headaches. And she wrote up, oh, there's all these different kinds of headaches and here's a remedy for each one. And they chose the one that was to soak your feet in mustard seed to calm down your vascular system for a headache. And by the way, I just tried that the other day and it really worked. It really worked. And so she got into O Magazine in like a week. And now that's one of her logos, which is super, super prestigious. Day seven is to send in your pitch. That is the hot headline that we talked about, the quick paragraph using the three hot hook formula. And, um, oh, so now I'm gonna hold up my resources to make sure that we have them too. So you can take a screenshot of this. Let's see if I can get that all in there. And I know Teresa put that in. I wasn't sure if it's clickable on the in the chat, but if you want me to send this to you in this pretty format, you can just ping me at publicist at prsecrets.com, like publish relations secrets, S-E-C-R-E-T-S. Dot com, But here it is as well. I don't know if it shows up backwards. Does it show up backwards? Nope, that's correct. Okay, uh, okay. But could you, uh, I had did just get a question, a, a request for you to put your website into the chat. Would you sure. mind doing that real quick? Oh, absolutely. Take and that. Um, yes, that link was clickable, but I'll, I'll, I, I will also, I, there was one person that said they had difficulty opening it. So I will send it to everyone after okay. that's attended today. So okay, great, great, great. And yeah. I was just thinking of the people who are seeing this on a replay where they don't have access to the chat. Right. Yeah. So I was thinking that's what I was, I was trying yes, to. Yes, I understand. Yeah. And right. Well. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so questions, and then I want to wrap up with the story. I know we've got two minutes. Are we allowed to go a few minutes over? Um, yeah, we can go a few minutes over. I, I don't have any questions posted right now. Oh, okay. Do any of you have any last questions? Otherwise, I will end with a story. Yeah, if anyone, and you can uh, use the raise hand icon if you'd like to ask a question oh. out loud. Or, mm -hmm. oh, we got one that just popped up. Oh, no, we have a thank you that just popped up. <laughs> oh. Thank you, sir. Always lovely. Okay. Uh, uh, what do you do? Um, why do you do what you do? I have that just popped up in chat. Oh, are you asking me why I do what I do? Well, uh, that's that's what just popped up. Randy, if, if that's really what you want to know, ask me. I And by the way, I have a number of signature stories um, that I tell depending on who the audience is. So I don't just have one, but um, yes, please. Okay, why do, you, why do you do what you do? Okay, why I do what I do is when I was... When I was young, I was I was a part of three different groups. I was part of the popular kids group, the sports group, and the artsy kids group. And one day, I saw um, one of my artsy friends being beaten up on the on the playground. Right, I was in junior high, and um, I've always like despised bullydom, you know. And so, even you know, as I was young, and really loved the. Um, the, the misfits and the creatives and that sort of thing. And so I saw him being beaten up and I ran and grabbed the bully and yanked him off and said, you know, leave him alone. And what are you people looking at? And scattered everybody away. And right then I was protecting the people who are the oddballs, the creatives, the entrepreneurs, the people who are in um, SCORE, you know, who are creating new businesses, the brilliant minds. And I consider myself a keeper of beauty and to help those who maybe have a harder time getting their word out, who have been 
um, oppressed or for whatever reason, haven't been able to step into the media spotlight. And so why I do what I do is to move those people forward into the media spotlight so they can share their gifts with the world. That's one of my signature stories. Thank you. That's lovely. You're welcome. Um, so great. I love this. So David says his 12-year-old daughter started fortunepockets.com, fortunes inside pocket tees. They're too young to, to drive PR. Advice on promoting your children. Um, I would, oh, that's an interesting, I, David, I would say they're not too young. It really depends on you. I had a client who was 15. She, uh, started a code coding nonprofit for girls. That's now gone national and the media loves, loves, loves children's stories. So depending on how you want to protect her, that's a choice for you, right? But I would say 12 is not too young and the media loves these stories of young entrepreneurs. In fact, it's easier for them to get publicity. And that's a great, you know, if you have a great story behind that, then that may be something, I don't know if you want to do that on your own, but there's definitely, you know, the entrepreneurial angle for, for, for that. So, so you, you, it's very hard to promote, like if, if it's her idea and her company, like it needs to be her that's at the forefront if you want to do publicity. So that's a choice, a personal choice for you. Um, can you see other questions there? Thanks. Oh, uh, I haven't, I don't see any other questions. I think that everything else has been thank yous and, um, you know, oh, the thing. Great. Yeah. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. I'm going to wrap up with a story then. Um, so Stephen Covey calls making something of your life to enrich the lives of your family and friends and community, leaving a legacy. And no one wants to be forgotten. And I had a friend named Hector and he was dying of cancer. And as the, the flesh was um, melting from his bones, he started drifting into other states of consciousness. And this, everybody loved Hector. And he could never make a choice. He couldn't even choose a restaurant. It was always like, whatever you want to do, I'm good with that, whatever, whatever kind of thing that you want. And so um, as he was drifting in and out of consciousness, um, Jesus, Buddha, Allah, and um, what's the last one? Um, Jesus, Buddha, Allah, and Krishna invited them, him, to their different versions of heaven. And he said, each was more beautiful than the last. And you couldn't even imagine how beautiful these places were. And they said, choose. And he said, I can't choose. I want to live. And then he died. So whatever you're choosing right now, your daily choices to know what you're capable of is part of that daily kind of choice that you make. And I'm hoping that choosing to do media to get out there what you came here to do, that that why you started your business and why you do what you do is part of that choice that you will make every day and, and really see what you're capable of. So thank you so much all for coming. I so appreciate it. I wish I could see your little faces, um, but I appreciate everything that you've said and, and contributed in the chat. And, and thank you so much, Teresa and Susan, for inviting me today. Well, so thank, you, thank you, Susan. I think everyone um, benefited greatly today. And I will be e emailing out that sheet um, that you provided for those that couldn't get it out of the chat. Um, and thank you, everyone. And uh, if we don't see you on our next last webinar of the season, we wish you all happy holidays.